I want to read one verse there oh. found in the first, second Chronicles, the fourth chapter, in the first verse. Corinthians. What did I say? Second Corinthians, Second. chapter four, and verse one is what I want. <laughs> Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Can you say Amen to that? Amen, amen. amen. to that. Therefore, having this ministry, in that powerful. Yes. We have this ministry. We thank not. <laughs> Father, thank you for the word of God that's sharp, yes. that's powerful, and any two-edged sword. Amen. To divide Amen. Asunder. Thank you, Jesus. It's able, dear God, by the grace of God, to help us to stand. As oh, divide. hallelujah. I pray for the grace and the favor of God that you'll help us tonight, Lord, to be what we need to be. Yes. Let God's grace you, and God's mercy overshadow us tonight. Because it's in you, Lord, that we stand and have our movement and have our beating. And I give you honor and I give you praise tonight in the name of the Son of God. Amen. Somebody Amen. say praise Amen. God. Praise God. God. Turn to your neighbors. I'm glad you're in God's house. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can also turn to the ninth chapter and the 10th chapter, 11th chapter of 2 Corinthians. I'm not going to preach all of that tonight. Let me tell you, I love the church. Amen. Come on, I, I don't talk about the church tonight. Amen. I love the church. Amen? Amen. Somebody say, I love the church. I love the church. <laughs> Everything that we are is because of that church. Amen. Yeah. I'm talking about just this one. I'm talking about the church in general tonight of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. It's bone of his bone. It's flesh of his flesh. It is him. Yeah. Amen. We are him tonight. Amen? Amen? We are in this present world. We are ambassadors for Christ. Amen. Brother Stanley, do you know how to, uh, you know all the words of that chorus? Just about. Well, sing it for us. <laughs> we are Christ ambassador. We are Christ ambassador. And our colors we must unfurl. We must wear a spotless robe. Clean and righteous before the world. We must show we're cleansed from sin. And that Jesus dwells within. Proving truly that we're truly Christ's ambassador. Don't that bring you back a long way. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, you know, you may not believe this, but I was a youth leader a long time ago. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But the church, we're in a time that the church has least importance in people's lives. Amen. Amen. Everything else has got pre preeminence. Everything else takes first place. Come on, shout with me now. You won't like the rest of it at all. It doesn't take the first place. And because it doesn't take the first place, they've lost their anchor. Yeah. They've lost their assurance. Yeah. They've lost the, the, the thing that's going to look for them in the future. Amen. Amen. The blessed hope. Uh, we made the world the place that we're going to stay. Amen. And this world is not the place we're going to stay. Amen. There's going to be a new Jerusalem in heaven. Amen. Coming down out of heaven. Hallelujah. And it's going to come upon a new earth where it dwells righteousness. So, and so the church is a place, dear God, bone of his bone, yeah. flesh of his flesh. Do I like everything that goes on in it? No. Am I happy with everything about it? No. But I'm sure God's not happy with me either. Mm. Right. Amen. But because I become part of him, amen, I believe that church membership is important. I believe being a part of a local body is important. I believe that you need to roll up your sleeves. Tighten down your belt. 
and start working for a purpose. Amen. 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 I tell you, anything you got to, you know, how many make biscuits? How many of you ladies make biscuits? Well, I saw a small <laughs> wave there. Amen. <laughs> them pop, them, them pop ups are pretty good, ain't they? Them pop biscuits. But I tell you, you have to work on perfecting that. Uh -huh. Amen. I tried that one time. And I tried that one time for, I said, we don't have men's breakfast, I'll, I'll cook the biscuits. I'll tell you, I've seen them women, you know, put that flour out there and make that stuff. And, and before long, I had it all over my hands and slinging and, you know, I had, had, uh, had all that, all over the walls, all over the floor. And I, I, from that moment, I said, the next time we'll have a men's breakfast, we'll have a woman cook the biscuits. No, they know how to perfect it. You, you just got to perfect things. And, and Jesus is perfecting his church. Amen. Yes. And we have this ministry, this, this church that he's gave us, the work of the Lord that he has. We're going to work for the Lord. We're going to have to work in that body. Amen. Yes. This yes. church here, we want something better. We got to work for it. Amen. Yes. We got to be willing to change ourselves and be what God wants us to be. Be willing to not conform, but be made like in the image of Christ. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Seeing something that's, that's wrong, trying to to correct it not making a big issue out of it but uh you know but you're working to make it better yeah uh -huh. amen yeah. something needs fixing try to fix it right. something needs to be worked on work on it yes amen. when we see those that's slipping from us do something about it amen, amen. jesus left the 99 and went and found that one yeah amen. that one was important as a big crowd is uh, yeah. that one is important because everybody in the body of christ has a place and a purpose and a meaning in their life. Amen. Amen. Everybody is important in the house of God. Say it with me. Everybody Amen. is important in the house of God. Everybody is important in the house of God. From the little children to the old people. Amen. From any, from the little ones to the big ones, from the teenagers. You know how I pray when I say, "Lord, send me people." And uh, then I get convicted about how that He want, what kind of people do I want? I want the children. Amen. I want the teenagers. I want those that's in their in their twenties. I want those, and I just rehearse it with the Lord. Send me some Lord that's in their twenties. Uh huh. Yes. Yes, sir. Who's in their twenties here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> kind of stay with us. <laughs> How many's in the thirties here? I went through. I went through. It. Okay. Come on. How many's in their forties? Fifties. Sixties. Seventies. You old. Eighties. I got my hand on up on all of them. <laughs> I say, Lord, send me those in their twenties. Come on, send those in their thirties, their forties, their fifties, their sixties. I know God can count, but I'm telling Him, Lord, and God, send me some of them children, some of them who are rug rats. Some of those that mess up the church. Amen. Some that mess up things. Come on, somebody help me here. Some of those that mess up stuff. And I don't, don't like to clean up after them. No. I get I get upset when I have to pick up paper here. I get upset when I have to clean up the nursery. When I, I, I when I go to the restroom here and clean up, I, I'm thinking, don't they know how to throw paper away? I've never, church is the only place in the world they make, they make paper. Amen. Uh, amen. I get upset when, when I have to pick up candy paper. Yeah. Y'all not be eating candy in here. I get upset when I have to pick up gum paper. Yeah. And I really feel the signs of the time when I reach under one of these things here and feel gum. He said they'd wax worse and worse in the last days. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But when that really bothers me, though, when I go to a class and there's no one there. That's right. mm -hmm. Amen. When I go by a class and there's only one or two in there. Yeah. And I see a class that maybe had 18 and now has just two or three in it. Am I talking about our church? I'm talking about anything that upsets me. When I go to church on Thursday night, when people that love the Lord and say they love God ought to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm talking to good folks now. I wish that mothers was here. I had to send them a note. Yeah. But it upsets me when people don't get get concerned about what makes the kingdom of God. Amen? Yeah. 
Because this is the ministry that God has given us. Come on, folks. I said it's the ministry. You got involved when you knelt at the altar of God. You said, Lord, I take the allegiance. Amen. I remember when we were kids, I pledged allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice and truth. Did I say it right? Amen. When we come to God, we gave God our right. Amen. We turned our right over to Him, and we said, Lord, we do everything that you want us to do. Remember that? Lord, just take me in, help me, and I'll be a part. Amen. It's not a time to withdraw. It's a time to push forward. It's not a time to quit doing. It's a time to increase. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Somebody get with me here tonight. Yes. It's not a time to quit giving. It's a time to give more. Amen. It's not a time just to quit giving of yourself. It's the time to find the place to live and work for the Lord Jesus. Will you meet opposition? You can rest assured you will. Will you meet grumblers and complainers? Amen. Sure you will. I said, will you meet grumblers and complainers? Amen. Amen. Sure you will. <laughs> but if you let that happen, you'll let grumblers and complainers rule your life and rule your work and won't do anything. Amen. Amen. I've, I've had some that liked my preaching. I've had some that didn't like it and was very vocal. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I've had some that would sit there and frown all the time you're preaching. Mm. You can tell when you made them mad. You can tell when you hit a stump. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. See, some that was real happy with it, some that wasn't <laughs> happy with it. Usually those that say certain things about it, won't be long you'll be waving at them. You know? yeah. <laughs> but I do know this. I... I whether it makes people happy or unhappy. Yes. Why did you come for all this? You come for a reason. Listen. Yes. Whether you make people happy about your work or you don't make them happy about the work, we're working for Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 We'll work Amen. till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. Amen. Because, see, we're not working for one person. That's right. If we was working for one person, we'd quit. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Because that person has a thing about like it or don't like it, good or bad. But you're not working for it for your for them. You're working for the Lord. Somebody. Amen. I'm working for the Lord. Say Amen. It, I'm working for the Lord. Somebody that takes a class. Somebody that takes a position. Somebody that says they're willing to do something. Do it for the best of your ability because you're doing not to me or to this church. You're doing it to God. God, the watchful eye of the Lord is looking. Amen. If you're going to mow the yard, do it dry. Do it as unto the Lord. If you're going to pick up paper, do it unto the Lord. Don't walk over that paper. Pick it up. Don't see something needs to be done. If you walk up here and say, these windows are dirty. Amen. Well, maybe God's talking to you about dirty windows. Yeah. Maybe God's talking to you about trash that needs to be thrown out. Whatever it is, and that's the small end. And the church and church has a purpose. Amen. That's what we're talking about. Church has a purpose. Therefore, we have this ministry and we do not faint. Amen. Fainting means we give up, we give over, we decide not to do it or we won't do it, but we just give ourselves to doing for the work of the Lord. Because what I've learned, I've learned in the house of the Lord. What I've become victorious over, I've had to become victorious over. In the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I couldn't fight the devil until I could overcome in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Somebody help me now. I've learned to overcome in the house of the Lord. Yeah. I've, come, I've learned in the house of the Lord to stand strong, head up, Amen. shoulders back, knees to the ground, and live an overcoming life. Stay yeah. steady, plow, plow. Right, amen, and get the get the plow deep in the ground and just keep plowing. Keep plowing when it looks good. Keep plowing when it looks bad. Yeah. When it looks like nobody's listening, just keep plowing. When people yeah. are shouting, you don't have to pre uh, preach for a while. I like that. When you don't have to service after service, you don't, don't have no preaching. And I let them shout and dance and go ahead. Old Brother Micolek, it didn't matter to, no, uh, to him whether you shouted all night. When you got through shouting, he going to preach all night. I mean, yeah. he, 
you, you, you shall do what you want to, but I'm going to preach when you get through. Why? Amen. Because he knew that if you put the plow in the ground, uh, don't look to the right or to the left because you'll make a curve somewhere. Amen. Just keep that plow going. Amen. Somebody says, how do you have revival? I love revival. I love to be a part. We take our we took our tent. I was I was thinking, Brother Johnson, as they, we were praying for our kids tonight, when we went over yonder to Prince Hall, and all of them 25 or 30 kids. I tell you, Elsie just shucked his shoes and acted like a kid. He'd get there about an hour before and play with those kids, but we'd get them corralled before church, uh, amen, and try to preach to them, and some got saved, amen. But I tell you, we're just doing it unto the Lord, amen. amen. And you just gotta, when, when, when there's no revival, you keep on steady. When there's no wind blowing, you just keep yeah. the sail up, yeah. amen. Yeah. Somebody help me. Yeah. When there's nothing happening, yeah. you just keep on plowing that yeah. gospel yeah. plow. Yeah. When there's nothing taking place, just keep driving nails. Noah just kept driving nails, and one day the rain come. Amen. And he was, you know what? He was ready when the rain came because he didn't give up to popular opinion or put it to somebody else to do. He kept his plow in the ground. That's what church is. We keep these lights on on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Thursday night. Amen. I, we find a lot of places we could quit and not do but we cannot do we can't stop doing because Jesus did not stop anywhere along the way he went all the way to Calvary until he said it was finished amen I know you get tired there's not a one of us who don't get tired if you don't think so or if you say you don't you a liar you get tired everybody gets tired you say you don't need sleep you're a liar there I seen you sleep in church <laughs> you get tired. You get where you don't want to go. Amen. You get where it's weary. You get where it's hard to do sometimes. And you think, I'm going to give up. I'm going to give in. And then I realize, what are we going to do when we do give in? We yeah. gave over, and the enemy will defeat us because it will be another mark in our defeat. Because when we could have went on, we went back. When we should have, we. When we had an opportunity to go forward, we didn't because of something, amen. Yeah. But we have this ministry, amen. I've learned to laugh in the house of God. I've learned to weep in the house of the Lord. I've learned yeah. to shout in the house of the Lord. I've learned, I learned to play that guitar in the house yeah. of the Lord, amen. Somebody, yeah. I learned to play that guitar. It was something when we first learned seven chords, all we knew. Uh, me and my brother thought we'd done hit the big times. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We we just had learned seven parts and we just took it to church. But there was somebody there, amen, that amen. took patience with us and told us, hey, boys, just sit here and watch me. Amen. And I tell you, there was one, he couldn't read or write, but he could play that guitar. Amen. amen. And he would break the string. He's the only one I know that could take that string and tie it together and put it back on that guitar and make it sound pretty good. But I, when I went to see him when he was in his 80s, when I walked in the front door, he jumped up, amen, suffering from a little bit of dementia, he jumped up and said, Brother Mac, let's play a few songs together, amen. So I, he, I got the guitar and he got the fiddle, amen. And we, we fiddled around a while, amen. Then he put the fiddle down, he said, you keep playing a little bit, and he got his harmonica out, you know. Oh, we fiddled on that for a while, now. and the joy that was coming across his eye, he couldn't think about something, but he knew how to play Play that guitar, yeah. and he knew we used to play with him. We yeah. played the harmonica, we played the fiddle, we played the mandolin. He got his guitar. He got. I'm telling you, we had a time that day. <laughs> Amen. And he told me when I left, he said, you make sure you get back over here. He said, I don't get to play like I need to in church anymore. He said, I can't think that it, I don't know where they're at anymore. But he said, we got together tonight. Yeah. I'm telling you, friend, that we learned that in the house of the Lord. Yeah. We need to, I, I, we got some kids here. I believe your daughter plays the trombone. Uh, Brother Brian's boy plays the uh, Flute, uh, somebody else plays something. Angel, Mr. Angel plays uh, trumpet. Plays the trumpet. I'll tell you what, I can put up with a little squeak, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. I said just to see him up here trying to pray, play, I can put up with a little squeak. Amen. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I said let him squeak yeah. along because one day, someday, they'll 
want to be playing in the house of God instead of playing out there in the world. They'll do something for the Lord instead of doing nothing and become drug addicts and drug heads. We need to put them on the front row and let them play. Let them learn what to do. Amen. Amen. Don't we? Well, when I started preaching, you know, boy, I thought, man, you can set the woods on fire. You know, you got all that in you, inside of you. You know, we just waited for an opportunity to preach. Man, we'd have thousands of notes we could write. <laughs> we knew how to write a little. Boy, we get up there and start preaching. About five minutes, we threw. I know some of you wish we was back there tonight, but <laughs> we'd be through. Wasn't long we could we could whittle with the best. Yeah. Hey, listen, friend, this thing is church. Amen. If I like the government of it, sometimes I've left business meetings thinking I'm gonna shoot every one of them. Amen. <laughs> amen. Come on, somebody yeah. say amen. amen. I had a lady in the church. She was as smart as a whip. She was intelligent, but when it come to church business. Her head was hard as this right here. Yeah. She couldn't get nothing in that head. Thank you. If you told her you was going to take 10% and give the mission, she'd say, what 10% are we talking about? Uh, <laughs> I'd tell her after with the meeting, I said, Sister, <laughs> I appreciate you praying. And it looks like you're going to need to do a whole lot more. <laughs> I've had some in church. I tell that one lady, she I could tell a joke. She couldn't get a joke. <laughs> I'd tell it, and she'd sit there. About five minutes later, she'd get it, and she'd start laughing. <laughs> and I said, "She got it." I preached a sermon one time on on whose wife shall she be? You know, over there where it said he had seven. This lady had seven husbands. And whose wives shall she be? Man, I fine-tuned that thing. About the seven church hours, seven church ages, you know. Man, I, ha I crossed all the T's, dotted all the I's. I said, everybody will get this. <laughs> everybody will get this. Ain't, ain't nobody going to miss this today. One lady invited us over to, to dinner. We was halfway into the dinner, and she said, Brother Mac, there's something that I've been needing to ask you ever since we left church. I said, uh, okay, what is it? She said, could you tell me whose wife <laughs> is that going to be? Amen. Whose wife is that going to be? Have you ever had unusual questions asked in the house of God, and unusual predicaments that took place in the house of God? Amen. You know you have. Yeah. You, know, you made people mad that you didn't want to make mad. You just took things wrong. And... Yeah. Come on. Come on. And they just took things wrong. They didn't understand nothing. You know, they didn't see how things was going. But church is church. Say it with me. Church is church. You know why? Because we have this ministry. Amen. We have this tonight because of who Jesus is. So, hallelujah. We are, we've learned in the church that if we sow, we'll reap. We've learned that in, hallelujah, God will help us if we become chill, cheerful givers. We've learned tonight that if, if we sow and give to the ministry, God will bless us and help us. So, we've learned in the 10th chapter of the book of Corinthians, so, amen. Man, that we, that our warfare is not carnal, Amen. but it is a spiritual battle that we're in. Do you hear me tonight? Amen. We're not just warring against one another down here of the popularity of who's popular and who's not. And some kind of whim of a, of a fleshly thing, but we've come against spirituality tonight. Yeah. We've come, we're making war. Amen. War says that he wants to destroy our children. Um, war says that he's come to steal and kill and to destroy. Uh, the enemy has come to destroy your life, to destroy your church, destroy your future. Uh, and it's not a carnal thing, it's a spiritual thing. And we can't fight him in a carnal way, we've got to fight him in a spiritual way. And the only way we're ever 
are going to overcome is to become spiritual men. Amen. Somebody help me now. And the only way we're ever going to ever overcome is to become spiritual men. Not men who are swayed by the affairs of this world, but become spiritual people who look at our lives as spiritual things. It's not entertainment that's getting our children out. It's the spirit. It's the enemy. Amen. And we war not against flesh and blood. It's the spirit of the age that we're in. It's the spirit that's bringing our children down. That's bringing our homes down. It's that spirit. You let him, how many in this house tonight know what I'm talking about? There's a spirit in this age, ladies and gentlemen, that is destroying. It's an anti-Christ spirit that's against everything that God is. And we're, we're fighting against everything that God established and is trying to overcome it. He's trying to kill and destroy and maim and, and bring confusion. I tell you, he's put stuff in people's lives that they won't even go to church anymore. And, and it's because it became carnal. If they'd have just kept it spiritual, they'd have overcome, my God. If they'd have kept it spiritual, they would have looked at it spiritual and overcame it. But when it got in their carnal life, it became death to them and robbed them of the victories of Christ. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. He who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Yes. Amen. He that's without sin, yes. cast the first stone. Oh, my God. It's a spiritual warfare that we have. Yes. Amen. When you came in here, sat down here tonight, demons came and sat with you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Preach. Demons came and sat with you to keep you from worshiping, keep you from thinking the things of God, and to cause you not to win this victory. Amen. Yes. The influence is everywhere. Yes. Yeah. There's the influence of evilness, and then there's just familiar things called familiar spirits that rob us of things. Yes. That they're always there. We don't recognize them as the enemy. And they're just overcoming us. Amen? Amen. It is. Amen. It's familiar. Yeah. It's just a familiar thing. There's familiar spirits that go to church with us. That's right. There's familiar things that bind people in their spirit. I know Christians tonight that are not torment, that are not possessed, but they are influenced by familiar spirits. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Come on. Somebody say amen. amen. It's true, amen. is it not? Yes. I tell you, they're not possessed because of no... The Holy Ghost and the devil can't possess the same place. That's right. But there's an influence that's in the lives of people that have become so familiar with. But ladies and gentlemen, we need to shake off the works of that darkness. Amen. I said we need to shake off the works of that influence Come on. and overcome by the power of Christ. Amen. Yeah. When we become nonchalant, when we become, we look at others in a, in a different view. When we try to, when, when we judge carnal and still spiritual. Paul yeah. said, I'd rather talk to, car I want to talk to spiritual men, but I'm having to talk to carnal men. Yeah. I want to give you some meat to eat, but I, you're still on the bottle. Yeah. Come on, brother. Yeah. And you can't go on because you're still doing that milk stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got to shake off that heavy load. We got to shake off that evil spirit that's in us. Somebody wave at me, my Come God. On, man. I said, we're, we're instruments of our warfare are not carnal, but they're spiritual. Yes. Come on, we're fighting. Our warfare is not a fleshly battle. And as long as we try to do it in a fleshly way, we will become losers. We've got to fight it in a spiritual way. And the yes. instruments of our warfare, chapter 10, the instruments of our warfare are not carnal, but spiritual. That exalts itself against the Lord. Amen. It's time that we use what God has given us to use Him. Amen. Yes, amen. Come on, somebody just help me for a few minutes. How many in this church tonight realize and uh, are, are, are been in church for a long period of time? Remember when we used to say, let's plead the blood? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, we plead the blood in Jesus' name. We don't hear much about that anymore. Amen. But see, there's a there's a niche to it. Because the devil can't go beyond the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's power in the blood. There's wonder-working yeah. power in the blood. Yeah. Is there any 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 victory in saying, I plead the blood? You can say that all you want to, but once in a, somewhere along the way, it's going to click in your spirit that there's power in that blood. And yeah. I, 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 I 
plead that blood that the devil will not cross uh, the line that Jesus has provided for us. Amen. Yeah. I plead the blood over this church. I plead the blood over every family that comes to this house. I plead the blood over every one of these children uh, that the devil could just pick out any kind of way. Amen. Yeah. I plead the blood over my grandchildren and my children uh, that the devil will not destroy their life. Build a bloodline. Somebody say build a bloodline. Yeah. Blood. Put the blood on the doorpost. Amen. Some way, somehow. Put the blood there, ladies and gentlemen. A friend of mine, every time he'd go to church, uh, there'd be a there would be a cat uh, 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 tied to the front door with his throat flitched. Uh, and it'd be on every door. Uh, and he didn't know what to do, but it was dematic activity going on. Uh, and he just didn't know what to do. He'd take them down, wash the blood, uh, and it was the next service, it'd be the same way. And so he walked on the porch one day, and there was one. Uh, as the same as it always been. And that Holy Ghost on the inside, when he said, Lord, I don't know what to do, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost said, don't you think it's time to plead the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Don't you think it's time to plead the blood of the Lamb? So he took it down. He said, I take it down in the name of the Lord. I wash this blood away, and I apply the blood of the Lord Jesus. He went around to every door, done the same thing. Well, when it came church time again, he was a little bit hesitant of what, what might happen. When he drove up, though, no more blood, no more cats. Amen. And the Holy Spirit said there's power when you plead the blood in the name of the Lord. Amen. We need to learn the instruments of our warfare are not carnal but spiritual. How, what would ever be with the Lord? We just plead the blood. What's in those two things? Plead the blood. Plead the blood. We pray that God would put the blood upon the doorpost of our lives. We're asking God to do what we cannot do. Yeah. Don't you believe there's power in the blood tonight? Yeah. Don't you believe that Jesus died and gave his blood that we might live yeah. and have abundant yeah. life? Yeah. Hallelujah. It's the blood. Yeah. And we're to plead that blood. When's the last time you just done anything like that? <laughs> just morning. Lord, I plead the blood over the song service. I plead the blood, Lord, over this church. I plead the blood over every everything, amen, that the devil might destroy. Amen. Right. amen? We have the instruments of prayer. That's why it's important that we gather and pray. You may, you know, and I know some of you live a long way off and and maybe can't come to every one of them, and I'm not, you, you let the Lord lead you there. But when it comes 630, you can find a place to pray. Yes. Come on, you can find a place to pray and say, I'll be praying in my home when y'all pray there. Yes. Come on, friend, we got to get together on this, you know? Yes. Uh, come on, friend, I said we got to get together yes. on this. Amen. And I know for sure. Yes. I stay as busy sometimes, and at the end of the week, I wonder what I've done. Yes. Right. You do the same thing. If you took an inventory, you say, what have I done this week? You stay busy. But did we accomplish what we needed? But I do know that we can accomplish through prayer. Amen. Yes. Yes. Prayer changes things. Yeah. Prayer changes things. Yes. So prayer changes yes. things. Yes. Well, I got I got a family. What if Brother Bert said I'm gonna be praying about it? Amen. Yes. Amen. I can't do it, but God can do it. I can't make yes. you, but God can. Yes. I can't change the situations, but God can. I can't alter situations, but the Lord can. I can't get anybody in church, but God. God can. Amen. I can't change my children's mind, but God can. Oh, somebody. Amen. I tell you, God can. If it's not worth praying over, it's not worth having. Amen. But if you're going to pray, believe God for it. God, Amen. Just keep asking. Well, what happens if I don't get it in a week? Just keep on praying. The Bible says in James that Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. That meant he hurt like we did. He he looked at things the way we looked at. He, he saw things as we saw. He, he got discouraged like we we do, but the Bible says that Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain upon the face of the earth and guess what? It rained not. Amen. It rained not for the space of three years and a half, but he prayed again. I love that when he said he prayed again. Amen. You just gotta pray again. If things don't happen, just pray again. If it don't happen this Sunday, keep on praying. If it don't happen Thursday night, just keep on praying. If it don't happen next Sunday morning, just keep on praying. Hallelujah. When you you see that when you've been invited to church, just say, I'm praying for you. I know you didn't make
make it last week, but you are going to make it. Hallelujah. And you know, before long, that, that bed will get hard. The situations will alter and change. And it won't be long. They'll walk through that door. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I've, got, I've been praying here a few times on Thursday. And I'm going to preach about you tonight. Oh, Virgin would come in, you know, and he'd wait till we got through praying. And we'd sit there and talk, you know, and then he'd leave. <laughs> And he'd come back. He, he wouldn't come on another day, Brother Tom. He'd come on Thursday. Uh, amen. So he wouldn't talk there. And the last time he was here, here, I said, now, Virgil, you know, you don't need me to preach to you, but I've been praying for you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I tell you, they get away from the sermon, but they can't get away from the preaching. Uh, yeah. Amen. The praying. Amen. Yeah. They get away from a sermon, get away from people, but they can't get away from prayer because God, who sees in secret, rewards you openly. Amen. Yeah. And it wasn't a few Sundays that he walked through the door and it wasn't long till he was down here because there's power in prayer. Amen. And if we can learn to pray God will lift us up. God will save our children. My God, can you imagine having church on Sunday night that lasts till Monday morning. My God, we to have church. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Takes God but a few moments to do what it takes us forever to even try to accomplish. But he prayed earnestly that it wouldn't rain. Then he prayed earnestly that it, it would rain. Amen. Yeah. And when he saw, he asked his servants, he said, is there a cloud out there? A few times he came back and said, ain't nothing yet. But on that seventh time he said, I see. I see a cloud about the size of a man's hand. Yes. Old Elijah said, he got up. Put on his Nikes. Yes, sir. <laughs> Rolled up that old garment, tied it off. Said, "You go tell Ahab it's going to rain." Yes, and the Bible says, when he sent that servant out one way, he went down the Kilon Valley. I stood there, and our God said, "This is where Elijah he ran that trail." Hey, Amen. Just some yeah. creek area. And he ran for over about, I forget how many miles, how many miles it was, but he said he ran because there was a sound of abundance of rain. Amen. My God, when we pray, believe that there's a sound of abundance of rain. Amen. It's not what I can do, it's what he can do. Somebody else. I said it's not what we can do, it's what he can do. It's not It's not what we're able to do in ourselves, but what, it, what we can ask God to do on our behalf. Amen. It's going to rain, ladies and gentlemen. You know why it's going to rain in this church? Because somebody's praying to let it rain. Amen. There's a song that says it's a 1950 kind of melody song. My son's, my son's Son sings. He said, "Oh, I wished it rain. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah! I wished it would rain. Don't you? Yes, thank God. I wished it rain. One of them gully washers. Yes. Yeah. One of those frog stranglers. Yeah. Hey, man, you ever been? You ever hear a dry frog cry for rain? Yeah. And <laughs> we need the rain. Yeah. Amen. I said we need the rain. Yes. Yeah. Come on, folks. We need the rain. Yeah. When you get dry, you need the rain. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. When the pond's dry, you need the rain. Yeah. Come on, yeah. man. I tell you what happened when it get, put, didn't rain for a while. Amen. Brother Thompson, them couldn't get in where the, their boats had to go around. Uh -huh. Amen. They couldn't get in. Yeah. Amen. You know what that meant? The fish got went further out. Yeah. Amen. They 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 got school way out yonder somewhere. But when it started raining, I tell you what, when it starts raining, things begin to move. Yeah. Somebody look at me. Glory to God. I said when it starts raining, start things start moving. Yes, Money amen. starts coming in. When the Holy Spirit starts moving, people start coming in. When, when the Holy Spirit begins to move, it begins to rain, new faces begin to show up. Amen. Why? Because we love the rain. Amen. Amen. I love the rain, don't you? I went walking the other night. I walked and I walked. I felt so good, I just kept on walking. Yeah. Before long, I'm thinking, I'm further home. I'm further away than I thought I was. Amen. <laughs> yeah. I, my old leg was bothering me and, and hurting, you know, and I just kept on walking for long. I was further than I thought. And, when, and I started towards home and started raining. Uh -huh. Good. Somebody wave at me. I said, Amen. and all of a sudden I realized I, I was sweating down, but I feel the, I feel that rain coming down, Amen. and I'm thinking, Lord, how good it is to be in the rain. Amen. 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 Got a little hard. I got under, I got under a tree, you know. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. I hear that frog way out there. 
<laughs> we need the rain. Amen. Come on, folks. Yeah. We need the rain. Amen. And I'm thinking, well, I'm a long way from home to be in this rain. Amen. Amen. But I'm thinking, I need the rain. Hallelujah. Amen. I need, I'm already wet with sweat. Amen. I just need the rain. We're already sweat with sweat because we can't do what we need to do. We're laboring and we don't know how to get over the labor. We're working and we don't know how. And we're getting down. But when the rain comes, oh, Come hallelujah. I said, when the rain comes, it washes away. Hallelujah. The old, that old sweat and cry. Hallelujah. It gives you a refresh. And I love to walk when you feel that rain hitting your face. Amen. And that breeze of blowing. Why? Because the rain has come. My God, let this church pray until the rain comes. Let's pray till the rain comes. My God, let's pray till the rain comes. And when the rain comes, others will come. Amen. I said others will come when the rain comes. That's right. Yes, hallelujah. hallelujah. And look at me for the next few minutes. The one thing the devil cannot overcome, he can imitate tongues. I've heard yeah. backslidden people talk in tongues. Yeah. I've been in yeah. revivals, and I know some of you have. And tongues would take place, and it, it felt like you were throwing peas against that wall. Mm -hmm. No feeling whatsoever. Right. He can imitate. Yes, he can. I said he can counterfeit. Yeah. I said he can counterfeit. Oh yeah. I've seen folks that look real religious, but they was devils. Come on, look at me. No, don't look at nobody else. Look at me. They were devils. Haven't you seen devils? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Just. But you know, here's the truth, and you pin it in your Bible. What the devil cannot fight is faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He cannot overcome people who are faithful. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mimic it. Come on, folks. Amen. I said those that learn how to be faithful, yeah. he can't overcome. Right. Them. Right. Will he try? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. He'll. Amen. Hey man, he'll act like a biting dog. We got a, our neighbors got one of them uh, uh, pit bulls. Oh my God! You know the only thing, only one that likes them dogs is the owner. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's, right. that's right. Hey man. Yeah. Woo. Who left the door open? Yeah. <laughs> every time we get in that yard, that dog's loose. Uh huh. I said every time we get in that yard, that dog's loose. When the kids lived with us, they had a little dog about this long, uh, long-haired, uh, like your dog. What are they? Schnauzer? Huh? Dodson. Dodson. Oh. And he, he's, he, he didn't like the grass at all because it tickled his belly. <laughs> you know, he just, he just, <laughs> help me, Brother Thompson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so he ran out there one day, and here come that dog across the road. And he got little Bubble, he just shook him like this, and throwed him up. And when little Bubble hit the ground, he headed towards the house. <laughs> and it beat the dog in the house. That's a mean dog. So my wife takes a stick to the mailbox. So I told her, I'm walking. She said, that dog's out there. I said, that dog scared me. <laughs> she said, he's a mean dog. I said, I'm a mean man. <laughs> He bite me, I bite him back. <laughs> come on, folks. I said, and he come running out there. I look at him. He run back. Then he, when I get down the road a little bit, he gets brave again. He come running there. I stop and look at him. I said, I'm mean as you are. Finally, he starts wagging that tail. <laughs> he goes to the house and I go walk. Amen. Amen. We need the rain. Amen. We need faithfulness. Amen. We need prayer. Amen. If we we'll, if this church will be faithful, yes. we'll get to that hill. Amen. If we'll be faithful, yes. that church will be full. Amen. If we'll be faithful, well, preacher, what about this? What about those that don't sometimes they're not as many as there was at other times. Well, what about it? Amen. 
I didn't go to school half time either. <laughs> I can't answer for them. Some of them, look at me. I said, I can't answer for them. But you know who I can't answer for? Right here. I can answer for me. And if I can prove my faithfulness, won't be long God will send somebody else to be faithful with me. I can't help what others do. Remember that old song? I must go on. Yeah. I can't help what mama does I must go on yeah. if daddy don't go I must go on yeah. if children don't go I must go on somebody said well pastor what about that church what if you lose everybody I said I know one thing I know one who will be working on that building amen yeah. because I'm working on a building yeah. for my Lord amen yeah. somebody help me I'm working on a building yeah. because he is he called me he called you uh, if you fail to do your part it'll just take a little bit longer uh, but won't be long God to get somebody else that'll fill your spot and do your thing Amen. because God's kingdom is not going to go down with the economy yeah. and not going to fail because God yeah. is faithful I said God is faithful and he's looking for faithful people who will stand in the gap and lift up the hands Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you'd be surprised tonight. I was talking to a preacher just took a church in, in Baylor, Texas. The last pastor had been there, I forget how many years. How many years? And the only service they have is Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Assembly of God, Pentecostal Church. Mm -hmm. Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Brother uh, Ricky Smith, we saw Thursday night, came evangelist. He's took a church in Flint, Texas. He's doing a wonderful thing there. <coughs> when I heard he was there, I said, that's the place he needs to be. Praise. I'm not doubting the last pastor, but for eight years, they never had one altar call. Mm -hmm. Never called to the altar mm -hmm. in eight years. Mm -hmm. And read the sermon from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. So I'm wrong with that question. Listen, those of us, we're, we're old fogies, I know. Yeah. We're dinosaurs. That's right. <laughs> but I cut my teeth on these pews, you know. We as kids, I, I'm, I'm hurrying now. I'm, I'm getting less winded. <laughs> but I, I remember when, we started, when our pastor started an old church. It was just an old garage, and it was a it was a, a dirt floor, and the dirt wasn't bad enough. Somebody came up with the idea to get some sawdust. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? You know, just oh, yeah. so they just filled the place full of sawdust. Yeah. Yeah. Dust to choke you. Right. Sawdust to kill you. <laughs> Now we kids, yeah. and them sisters get loose in that sawdust. Mm -hmm. And between us, we're up, we're close to the front. And then, then sisters get to shouting across that front. All of a sudden, it's a smoke thing. Just Whoa. you can't see what's going on up there, but you know somebody's kicking up some dust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it just gets everywhere because everybody's having a wonderful time. And we leave there. The white dresses were no longer white. And us white folks was no longer white. You had grit in your mouth. You had sawdust in your ears. But oh my, that night. When something got a hold of me. When something got a hold of me. Amen. Oh my, that night. And it's made the difference ever since. Yes. Glory to God. Friend, God, it will just be faithful. Just be faithful. Faithful when it doesn't look good. Be faithful when it looks bad. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Be as encouraged as you can be. Encourage somebody else to be encouraged. Amen. Talk faith. Talk. Amen. 
Just be faithful to yourself. Yes. Hold on. God will put somebody next to you. Right. Amen. Somebody behind you. Let it be faithful. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be a part of what God's doing, don't you? Amen. I love the church. Say, if you, if you love the church, you say, I love the church. I love the church. Amen. You know why I love this church? Because I love his church. Amen. This church is a part of his church. But I love this church. I love his church. Amen. I'm glad to be a part of that church. Amen. I, was, I didn't join. I was born. Hallelujah. In, in the God's house. Amen. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and, and powers in the air, we don't just wrestle against this, but we we got a purpose. Amen. Listen, it's our kids that may die and go to hell. It's this community. Amen. This is a very religious community, but it's a lost community. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I said it's a, a religious a religiousosity, but it's a lost church. It's a lost town. Amen. When the conscience of this community, Amen. If you're a pan panther, you got the spirit. What we need is the Spirit of God. Amen. We need to get real serious. Some of the yes. We need to get real serious about having church. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. How many was here Friday night? Yeah. Man, didn't Brother Leon talk to us? Amen. Amen. He talked yes. about the head and other places. Kind of nasty. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. But I tell you what, there's some nasty places. Yeah. But what we need. Is to believe in that church. Right. Amen. To believe in what we're doing. Yes. Right. And right. see what God's going to do yes. with me and you. Amen. 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 Do you know what Jesus done with five loaves and two fishes? Oh, yes. yes. Jesus yes. fed over 5,000 yes. men. My God, I tried to get in front of the line today with just 15 of us. <laughs> but I'm telling you, friend, five loaves and two fishes, God fed all of those people. Yes. yes. Just think what God can, God took 120 people, 120 people, and today Pentecost, they call themselves Pentecost, is 500 million strong worldwide. Glory. Amen. Amen. Glory. They claim to be Pentecost, besides those that are stuck in other churches, mm -hmm. they say they're something else. Yeah. Amen. 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 But you know what? There's some old gray-haired mamas that's been praying this for the Holy Ghost yeah. in a lot of other churches. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know the Quakers. Remember them? You know why they were Quakers? You know why they called them Quakers? Quaker. The Quaker. Holy Ghost would come on them. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> They'd start shaking. Yes. They'd fall out. They'd, yes. they'd quiver on the ground and they called them Quakers. Because they quaked. They'd have, duck, they'd have been duckers. <laughs> but, they, but they quake. We call Pentecost because we're Pentecostal. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There's power. Yes. Amen. I've got to close. If you don't love something, you'll leave something. Right. Right. If you don't care about it, you won't honor it. Right. But if you love it, you'll cling to it. Amen. If you love this church, can I just throw this in? I've done got this far. I done got the mad. <laughs> I done got you mad anyway. How you treat this house is how you treat him. Right. Right. And how you treat you go to somebody's Amen. house and you tear up their furniture and you just do anything while you're there, you don't honor them people. Right. Amen. You respect them people, you you do what's there. Right. You come into this house, you act like the devil. Come on. Right. And you, yeah. you throw your, your paper, you throw your gum, you, you, you talk out of turn, you, you do all of this, you dishonor God's house. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Listen, yeah. what are we going to do, preacher? We've got to honor God, honor God's house, honor the true <laughs> prayer, honor what God's honor, love what God loves, and it won't be long, God will start pouring in what, yeah. in what he loves. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Don't wash the outward garment, wash the inward. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Let God. Don't try to eliminate yourself of trying to find out how little you can do. Find out how much you can do. That's right. How many want God just do a little bit in your life? No. I want all he can do. Amen. So what i got to do is to do more on his behalf. Yes. Amen. I didn't mean to scold you. He just slipped. <laughs> but see, to make us better, we got to do more. To get, you know, I didn't graduate out of school in the first grade. No. 
They liked me so much in the third grade, they kept me a second year. <laughs> I can remember almost every teacher we had because I sat so close to the desk. <laughs> I, I remember every one of them. There was something about that talking. I just Somehow I talk when they talked, you know. You know, it's just, just one of them deals. But I graduated eventually. You hear me, friend? We'll never graduate our list until that trump, that trump sounds. Amen. But if we're going to get in that, yes. we got to do what we need to do. I love the church. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm in this church. This glorious church, I didn't join till I was born, I had a bird. Some glorious day, gonna sail away by His grace, not by my works. In this church, I'm in this church, this glorious church, I didn't join till I was born, I had a bird. Some glorious day. Don't sail away by His grace, by my works. I'm in this church place. I'm in this church, this glorious church. I didn't join till I was born, had a new birth. Some glorious day. Don't sail away by His grace, by my works. I'm in this church. I'm in this church. This glorious church, I didn't join till I was born, had a new birth. Some glorious day, don't sail away by His grace. If you feel that way tonight, somebody stand and sing it with me. I'm in this church, this glorious church, I didn't join till I was born, had a new birth. Some glorious day. Don't sail away by His grace, by my works. I'm in this church. I'm in this church, this glorious church. I didn't join till I was born. I had a new birth. Some glorious day. Don't sail away by His grace, by my works. I'm in this church. All right. Now we're gonna do the same thing. That we did with the children. I want somebody to pray for this church. I'll go first. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you'll bind every spirit. Yes, God. Every spirit that keeps us from growth, that keeps us from maturing, yes. keep us from developing. I pray for the spirit of unity. I pray for the spirit, Lord of truth. I pray, dear God, that we will look with God's eyes and not our own eyes. I pray that we will see that we're workers for you and not one another. We are working together, but we're working for the Lord. And I pray, God, that you'll let the Holy Ghost come and be, a, be Lord, not a part of this church, but let it be in this church. Let it be this church, dear God. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to eliminate, Lord, our idleness, dear God, and, Lord, plow our way to victory through the name of the Lord Jesus that we can become the church of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Blood bought, blood bought. Dear God, we may be hell fought, but we're blood bought. And God, because we're blood bought, we're victorious in the Lord tonight. And so, Lord, I pray for this church. I pray for the people of this church. God, that you'll let us become a church. God, let us become a church, Lord. Where we're not, in the areas that we're not, help us to become. Lord, in the areas that we're failing, help us to go on with, Lord, and learn what you expect out of us and do, Lord, what's necessary for the kingdom of the Lord Jesus. I ask it, and I ask it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Somebody right quick, come on. Hallelujah. God, I pray that you'll knit us closer together in your love and unity. 